All right, so chapter 10.6 is entitled Odds and Expectation. By the time we finish this section, hopefully we will be able to compute the odds in favor or uh, in favor of or against a particular event, compute odds from probability or compute probabilities from odds. As really odds and probabilities, we will find out are essentially the same and compute expected value. Um, expected value or expectation is used uh, a lot in industry, especially the insurance industry and also the gaming industry. And we'll see what that's all about. All right. <clears throat> we probably all heard of the uh, word odds before. <clears throat> what are the odds of, uh, you know, maybe a team winning a championship or uh, what are the odds of uh, winning the lotto, okay? Or the odds of uh, having your horse win at a racetrack. Okay, odds are used by the gaming industry, casinos, racetracks, but not just those. They're also used by um, the insurance industry <laughs> to determine um, the payoffs when bets are made or lottery tickets are purchased or when insurance policies are taken out, as we'll find out. Um, now, if an event E has a favorable outcome, if event E has a favorable outcomes, there should be um, quotation marks around A here. If an event E has A favorable outcomes and B unfavorable outcomes, then we say the odds in favor of event E occurring would be A to B, <clears throat> A over B. Again, A is the number of favorable ways in which event E can occur, and e, uh, B is the number of unfavorable ways in which E um, <clears throat> can occur or the number of ways that B cannot, uh, event E cannot occur. Um, A to B odds can be written as A colon B also, as, but normally they're written as a fraction. Now the odds against event E occurring would be B to A. <coughs> B to A. So just like uh, probabilities, uh, odds are usually expressed as fractions. So suppose that like we're interested in getting two or less when rolling a single die, um, then there's essentially two favorable outcomes that would enable this event to occur. That is if we roll a one or a two and there's six total outcomes. So we would say the probability of rolling a, a, a two or less on a die would be two over six or one third. Odds are somewhat similar but they provide a comparison between the number of favorable and unfavorable ways in which an event can occur. In the case of rolling a die and getting two or less, there's two favorable ways in which that can occur. That is if you roll a one or a two, and there's four unfavorable outcomes that would uh, warrant that that event does not happen. So the odds that we roll two or less on a die would be two to four or one to two odds. So notice um, uh, odds like probabilities are writable as fractions, but there is a little, there is a difference between them. Um, but we'll show you what formulas relate them and how we can convert back and forth between odds and probabilities. Okay. So what would be um, the odds against rolling uh, two or less on a die. Well, that would be four to two odds. <clears throat> All right, let's turn our attention to a, a standard a deck of cards that has been randomized. And suppose that we reach in and pull out a card from the deck. Uh, what would be the odds in favor of getting an ace? So what's the odds of choosing an ace from a deck of cards? Well, how many favorable ways can an ace occur in a deck? How many aces are there in a deck? 
There's four aces. Four. Versus how many unfavorable ways are there to draw an ace from a deck of cards? How many cards are not aces? 48. 48. So we would say the odds of drawing an ace from a randomized deck of cards would be 4 to 48 odds. 4 over 48. Or 1 to 12 odds. One to 12 odds of drawing an ace from a deck of cards that's been randomized. Um, the odds of not drawing an ace from a deck of cards would be 12 to 1 odds. Okay. What would be the odds against getting an ace? Well, that'd be 12 to 1 odds here. All right, so you can see that odds um, are a comparison of the number of favorable ways in which an event can occur versus the number of unfavorable ways in which it can occur or which it cannot occur. Think of it that way. So one way of thinking about the odds uh, in favor of drawing an ace from a randomized deck is to say that if you were to draw 13 cards from the deck, 13 cards, you would expect one of the 13 cards to be an ace and 12 of them to not be an ace. That's how you can think of it. Okay. All right. Now... Um, this formula here kind of like relates uh, odds to the probability of an event occurring. So the odds in favor of some event E occurring would be equal to the probability that event E occurs divided by the complementary probability, one minus the probability of event E occurring. Or the odds against event E occurring would be one minus the probability that it does occur divided by the probability that it does occur. Okay. All right. I also want to show you something else. Now would be the time to probably do that. Uh, suppose that... Um, If A to B um, is the odds of event E occurring, then we would say A to A plus B is the probability that event E will occur. All right. Or if A to B is the probability Uh, event E, whatever it is, occurring, then A to B minus A is the odds of event E occurring. All right. So this is how we can relate odds to probabilities. Um, so if you're going from odds to a probability, the denominator becomes the sum of the number of favorable ways versus uh, the number of unfavorable ways for an event to occur. Whereas if you're going from a probability back to odds, you have to take the denominator and subtract off the number of favorable ways in which an event can occur.
that would become the denominator of the odds ratio. Okay. Uh, so let's just look at an example here. Suppose that the probability of some event E occurring is, let's say, three-fourths, 75% chance that event E will occur. So the odds of E occurring would be what? What's the odds of event E occurring? If this is the probability of event E occurring, what would be the odds of event E occurring? <laughs> well, it's going to be 3 to 4 minus 3, or 3 to 1 odds. Anybody see that there? So if the probability of some event E occurring is 3 fourths, then the odds of the event E occurring would be three to one odds. All right. Um, suppose that um, if the odds of some event B is, let's say the odds is... Uh, <laughs> five to two. Wait a minute here. Hold on a second. Uh, well, let's say the odds. All right. Suppose the odds of, a, of some event E is like five to two odds then what would be the probability of event E occurring? The probability of event E occurring is going to be 5 to 5 plus 2, or 5 sevens, 5 to 7. Okay, 5 sevens. All right, so that's how you navigate back and forth between odds and probabilities, all right? So this is important to kind of like remember or if you cannot remember it, you might want to have it on like a note card so you have it handy here, how to navigate back and forth between these two things here. All right. The probability of getting exactly one pair in a five card poker hand is 0 0.423. Now, one pair would be like getting like uh, two uh, two aces or, or getting like two sevens or getting two nines or, or two kings. It's called a pair. You got a 42% chance of uh, having that happen when you're dealt a five-card poker hand. Find the odds in favor of getting exactly one pair and the odds against. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to call this, um, let's see here. The odd, find the odds in favor of getting exactly one pair and the odds against getting one pair. Okay. So, notice that they give us the probability of getting one pair is 0 0.423. Uh, what would be the odds in favor of getting exactly one pair in a poker hand? All right, what would be the odds? Well, let's take a look here. Now, so they give us the probability of getting exactly one pair, which is 0 0.423. And then we're going to divide that by one minus the probability of getting exactly one pair, which is the complementary probability to 0.423, which is 0.577. But you don't want to leave this looking this way. Um, you want to get rid of the decimals in the numerator denominator of this fraction. So to do that, you would uh, have to multiply the top and bottom of uh, this fraction by a thousand. There should be a thousand here. That'll force the dust point to be shifted three places to the right, in which case you would have the odds of getting um, exactly one pair of something in a five card poker hand would be 423 to 577. 
So the odds against getting exactly one pair on a five card poker hand would be 577 over 423 or 577 to 423. We understand what's going on here. And the way they did this problem here is <clears throat> they're tapping into this formula right here. Okay. All right. So notice this formula comes in handy later when they give you the probability of some event E occurring as a decimal. When that's the case, to convert it to odds in favor of that event occurring, you would want to use this formula here. You take the probability of that event E occurring as a decimal and divide it by one minus that decimal. Okay. Um, and again, it's very awkward to ever leave any decimals or fractions appearing in a numerator or denominator of a fraction. And so for that reason, they multiply top and bottom of that by a thousand so that they could have whole numbers in the numerator and the denominator. Uh, because that's the way odds are expressed, using a whole number to a whole number. Okay. Not a decimal to a decimal or a fraction to a fraction. All right. And this is just showing you what I just indicated. If the odds in favor of an event E are A to B, then the probability that the event E will occur is A over A plus B. So according to the National Safety Council, the odds of dying due, due to an injury at some point in your life are about 10 over 10 to 237. Find the probability of dying from an injury. Well, these are odds of dying from an injury, 10 to 237. So there's 10 favorable ways of dying from an injury. There's 237 unfavorable ways of dying from some injury. Okay. So there's 10 favorable ways of dying from an injury versus 237 ways in which you're not going to die from an injury. Think of it that way. So how would we convert this odds into a probability? Well, according to this Obeka here, it's going to be 10 over 237 plus 10, which gives you a probability of 10 over 247. So that's the probability of dying from an injury, 10 over 247, all right? And that's getting back to um, what I just showed you here. If this is the... If this is the uh, odds of an event E occurring, then this would be the probability of event E occurring. And to go backwards again, if this is the probability of an event E occurring, this would be the odds of that event E occurring. All right, then the next, the last concept in today's lecture involves what's called the expected value of a random variable for a particular experiment, a probabilistic experiment. Um, the expected value is used to determine the result that would be expected over the long haul, or, or it's used to compute the average value or outcome of an experiment if the experiment is conducted many, 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 many trials or many, many times. Okay. All right, so here's an example how to compute the expected value. Um, suppose we uh, consider this, uh, this game here. Suppose we pay a dollar to roll two dice. If we roll a total of five or a six, then we not only get to keep our dollar that we paid to play the game, but we win two more dollars on top of that. If we don't roll a total of five or a six on the two dice, then we basically lose our dollar. Find the probability of winning the game. Well, how many ways uh, can we roll a sum of a five or a six when we roll uh, uh, no, two dice? Well, um, we seen back in section uh, 
and uh, see if I can show you this here. I don't know if this is going to work. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can bring up the 10 4 lecture here quickly. Remember, we were working with tree diagrams to enumerate uh, outcomes of a particular experiment. All right. Remember this one right here, this guy? All right. So this lists all the possible outcomes of rolling two dice. Okay. Whether you roll the dice in sequence, roll the red dice first, red, red, red die first, then the blue die or if you just throw both of them on the table, okay? <clears throat> they want to know, what is the probability of rolling a sum of a five or a six? How many ways out of 36 outcomes can we roll a sum of five? Well, that could occur if we roll a four and a one, or a three and a two, or a two and a three, or a one and a four. All right. Plus, how many ways can we roll a sum of six? That can occur if we roll a five and a one, four and a two, three and a three, two and a four, or a one and a five. <clears throat> so of the 36 possible outcomes, it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ways of uh, rolling a sum of five or a six. Therefore, the probability of rolling a sum of, of five or six on, on two dice would be nine over 36 or one fourth or 25% chance. True, makes sense. Okay. All right, so the probability of winning the game would be 936 or one fourth here or 0.25. Now, if we play this game 100 times, let's say we, we, we roll these dice 100 times, on average, how many times would you expect to win on average? Well, um, that's a good question. Okay, so we're going to investigate that. So uh, we'd expect to win this game 25% um, of the time when we roll these two dice. So if we play this game 100 times, we would expect to win uh, 25 out of 100 games. Now, now, that's on average. So I have a question for you. Does that mean that if you play this game 100 times, roll these two dice 100 times, you're going to roll a sum of five or a six in exactly 25 of the 100 games? Is that what this is saying? Or if I play this game 100 times, that means I'm going to roll a sum of five or a six in exactly 25 of the 100 games? That's not what this is saying. What it's saying is that... <clears throat> If we were to play this game, let's say a million times, or maybe even a billion times, on average, okay, if we were to play this game a million or billion times, in other words, roll the dice a hundred times, that's called playing, uh, not a hundred times, but if we were to play this game, let's say a hundred, uh, a million or billion times, on average, we would win 25% of the time. On average, we would roll a sum of five or a six, 25% of the time on average. That's not to say that, you know, every time we do play this game, we are going to roll a sum of five or a six. Sometimes we will not. Okay, But this is saying on average, if you play this game over many, many times or many, many trials, the average number of times that you'll roll a sum of five or a six will be um, you know, about 25% of the time. Okay. So it's a long-term average. All right. Now, let's try to address this last question here it says what would be the total amount won or lost okay 
We know that if we were to play this game 100 times, we would expect on average to win about 25 times out of 100. But like I said, that's going to vary. Uh, sometimes when you roll the dice 100 times, you may only win maybe 10 times out of 100 games. Or maybe you'll win the next time when you roll it 100 times, you'll, roll, you'll win maybe, uh, maybe 40 times out of 100. All right. Okay. So how can we, you know, figure out our average winnings when we play this game, um, you know, let's say like uh, one time, just one time. If we roll the dice just one time, the two dice. Well, for this experiment, I am going to define what is called a random variable, right? So I'm going to let X be equal to our winnings uh, for uh, this dice game. Now, the sample space of the random variable X is going to be what? <laughs> well, when we play this game of rolling the dice, we're, we're either going to win or lose. We're either going to roll a sum of five or a six, or we're not going to do that. If we do win the game, all right, uh, let's see. So if we, we win the game, um, we expect to win what? $2. Do you agree? So if we win, we will win $2. If we lose, we're going to lose $1. Because it costs one dollar to play the game, so that would be the sample space for this random variable defined for this uh, uh, tossing of the two dice game here. Now I'm going to make a table here. First column is going to be called my value of my random variable for this game column, and my second column is going to be called the probability of that random variable assuming its value column. And then I'm going to have another column over here which is going to be x times p of x. All right, so x can take on what values? Well, $2 if I win the game, or negative $1, meaning I lose the game. I lose $1. So what's the probability of winning this game? Well, we computed the probability is, uh, what, 25% chance. Do you agree? So this is 0.25. The probability of losing the game, therefore, would be 1 minus 0.25 or 0.75. Now, 2 times 0.25 is going to be what? That's going to be 0 0.5, correct? Negative 1 times 0 0.75 is negative 0 0.75. <laughs> so now, ladies and gentlemen, the expected value of the random variable x. That's how you read this notation here. This is the expected value of x on average. Okay, for any play of this game. All right. And that's going to be found by literally summing up the products of X and its probability. This means sum. So the expected value of our random variable is going to be found by just adding these values together here. 0 0.50 plus negative, and these are dollar figures here. So this is also a dollar figure. So this works out to give us negative 0.25 dollars. Mm -hmm. So this is saying on average, when we play this two dice game, we throw these two dice. On average, we would expect to lose about 25, 25 cents per play on average. 
Now, <clears throat> I got a question for you. When I play this dice game, can I actually lose 25 cents when I play it once? Can I lose 25 cents when I play this game once? Well, the answer is absolutely not. Because when we play this game once, we're either going to win $2 or we're going to lose $1. So where does this come in? I'll tell you where this comes in. If we were to play this game, let's say, 100 times and document our winnings after each play, okay, sometimes we win $2, sometimes we lose a dollar. Maybe on the third play, we lose another dollar. The fourth play, we lose a dollar. Let's say we maybe win $2 on the fifth play. Maybe we lose a dollar on the sixth play. We win $2 on the seventh play. Maybe we win $2 on the eighth play. Maybe win $2 on the ninth play. Maybe lose a dollar on the tenth play. If we were to keep track of this, okay, of our winnings, if we were to play this game like a like hundred times, and if we were to then add all these up, all the outcomes of our 100 plays, and then divide by 100, we would expect the average winnings to be right here. That's the average winnings. It's an average. You're never going to lose 25. It's impossible to lose 25 cents when you play this game one time because these are the only outcomes. Either you win $2 or you lose a dollar. It's that simple. This is the average winnings if you were to play this game many, 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 many times. And if you were to take all those winnings from each of those times and add them up and divide by the number of times you play, the average would be you're out a quarter. Okay, It's an average. And so one way you could think about this expected value is to Think of it uh, this way. Suppose, ladies and gentlemen, let's suppose one million people play this game. Does this expected value of the random variable favor the player or the house? Who does this favor? Player or the house? The house is the, you know, the ones that are offering this game to the public. Okay, They are the ones that are taking in a $1 from everybody to play the game. So this expected value, do you think that favors the player in the long run or the house? What do you think? Anybody. Anybody out there? Signs of life. Anybody? Wouldn't it favor the, the house? Player? It favors the house. You are correct. It favors the house over the long haul of things, okay? If a million people played this game, the house would expect, on average, to bring in one million times 25 cents. And what is one million times 25 cents? Wow. They would expect to bring in a whopping, on average, $250,000 profit. On average. So the game favors the house. It does not favor the player. Okay. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, that's basically how the casino ensures that the casino stays in business. They make sure that they gear the, all the games on the floor so that, in general, they favor the house over the long haul of things. Now, I'm not saying that people never win at casinos because there's many winners at casinos. But let me give you an example. If you do win at a casino, say you won a huge sum of money on a slot machine. 
Let's suppose that you do the foolish thing of reinvesting all that money back into the slot machines to try to win more money. And if you win more money, you keep doing that. You keep reinvesting it back into the slot machines, back into the slot machines to win more, 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 to win more. You keep playing, 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 reinvesting back in the slot machines. Who will win the war at the end? You or the house? The casino. The house. The casino will make sure they get every penny back and then some. They got it geared for that, ladies and gentlemen, because they want to make a profit. They got to stay in business. Okay. They're not there to, you know, go out of business. They're there, they're there to stay in business. So the worst thing you can do, just keep this in mind if you ever go to a casino, if you went big on a slot machine, let's say, the worst thing you can do is reinvest it back, all of it back into a slot machine to try to win more. I'm telling you, the odds are stacked against you. Don't do it. Wise thing is to keep at least the majority of the, the winnings out so you can walk out the door that day or night with that. If you want to reinvest some of it, that's okay. Then you know, continue to play, but don't reinvest all of it back into the, into the slot machine. You know, the house is going to get it back. That is a guarantee. Okay. And they actually hire people that have math degrees to make sure that that happens. I was very close to becoming an, act, an actuary. Um, all I had to do was take a battery of exams to become a certified actuary. Um, normally, you have to get a degree in math, at least an undergraduate degree in math. Maybe it's a graduate degree by now. I don't know. But it's a very good job. You can work for insurance companies. You can work for casinos. Uh, you can work for amusement parks. Okay. Uh, as a, I think they call them logicians now. They don't call them actuaries anymore. Logistics. You ever hear that word, logistics? Anyways, these are people that have math degrees that actually work for these companies. Okay, uh, insurance companies, um, the casinos, and they basically crunch the numbers and design things mathematically so that the house or the insurance company can make a profit. All right. <clears throat> All right. So. Did this example make any sense here? This playing this dice game by throwing the dice twice, hoping to get a sum of five or a six. If we do, we win two bucks. If we don't, we lose our one dollar because we had to lay one dollar out to play the game. Okay, but you can see later on because the expected value from the standpoint of the the player is a negative. You can see that this favors the house, not the player. Okay. All right. Let's... Let's go back here. All right, so expected value is computed by taking the value of a random variable, all right, um, and multiplying by the by its probability of it assuming that value and then adding all these products up. There should be multiplications in between these guys right here. This should be x sub 1 times p times p of x sub 1, x sub 2 times p of x sub 2, plus dot, 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 x sub n times p of x sub n, okay? Those should be multiplications there. <laughs> All right. All right, let's look at this uh, particular little game here. When a single die is rolled, find the expected value of the outcome and describe what exactly that means. All right, let's entertain this. Uh, now, I'm rolling a one die, correct? For the purposes of rolling one die, I'm going to define my random variable x for this experiment to be equal to the face uh, that is rolled. What's the sample space of this random variable? Well, it's going to be the set consisting of one, two, three, four, five, or six. Those are all the outcomes that could occur when you roll a die. Now, if we were to roll this die many, 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 many times and keep track of the face that occurred at each time and then add all those results together and divide by the number of times we rolled our die, what average value or average face would we expect over the long haul of rolling this die game here? Well, let's find out. Let's make a table here. X, probability of X. And in the last column, we'll actually multiply X times P of X. The outcomes are one, two, three, four, five, six. What is the probability of rolling a one on a fair die? That would be one six. 
And it's one six for rolling any one of these faces. Do you agree? That's why it's called a fair die. All right, what is x times the probability of x? Now, one times one six would be one six. Two times one six would be two six. Three times one six, three six. Four times one six, four six. Five six. Six times one six, six six. The expected value of this random variable, if we were to, you know, roll this die many times and keep track, would be the sum of this last column. So it's going to be 1, 6, plus 2, 6, plus 3, 6, plus 4, 6, plus 5, 6, plus 6 over 6. And what's this going to give us? 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is, what, 6, plus 4 is 10, 15, 21. This will be 21, 6. By three, this reduces down to seven halves, which gives us 3.5. Now, I got a question for you, ladies and gentlemen. If I roll this one die once, could I roll a face of 3.5? No. Impossible. All I could roll is either a one, two, three, four, five, or six. So what is this saying? What is this saying? How do we interpret what that's saying? What is the expected value saying here? Tell you what it's saying. If we were to roll this die 100 times and keep track of each face that we roll, let's say the first time we roll a 2, maybe we roll a 1, maybe a 5, and then a 6, maybe a 1, maybe a 1, maybe a 1, maybe a 4, maybe a 3, maybe a 4, maybe 4, maybe a 6. If we were to keep track, okay, of all our outcomes for 100 rolls of this die, if we were to add up all these outcomes, add them all up and divide by 100, we would expect that average to be what? 3.5 average. This is an average, ladies and gentlemen. It's not actually an outcome that could occur on any roll of this die. It's the average that you would expect, okay, after you roll this die many, 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 many times. That's an average. Ready? It's an average. So that would be the expected value of this random variable over rolling this die over many, many trials or many, many times. <laughs> yeah, 3.5. Okay. All right, let's play another game. This is kind of fun. Here's another game. The prize in a raffle is a flat screen TV valued at $350. And a thousand tickets are sold at a price of one dollar each. What's the expected value if you buy one ticket? In other words, ladies, what would be your expected winnings if you buy one ticket? Your expected winnings, okay? Or if you were to, you know, maybe buy, uh, play this game many, 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 many times. On average, what would be your expected winnings? Well, let's find out. Okay, so. In order to compute the expected value or expected winnings for this game, we need to define a random variable, x, for the game. I'm going to let x be equal to my winnings. So what would be the sample space of my random variable, x, here? Well, if I win, how much do I win? Um, you know what? I'm going to call X my net winnings. Net winnings. So, ladies and gentlemen, if I win this game, I win a TV valued at 350 bucks. So, I really won like $350 because you could turn around and sell it for $350. Or, I know what you're thinking. Some of you try to flip it for even more. But, suppose you can only get $350 out of it. Well, you won $350. But you had to lay out $1 to play the game. So what would be your net winnings here? Your net winnings. Well, your net winnings would be $350 minus the $1 you had to lay out to play the game. So your net winnings would be $349. This is if you win the game. You choose the winning ticket, in other words. But the other side of the coin is, what if you lose? If you lose the game. Well... If you lose the game, 
that means you lose what? You lose your $1, correct? You're out your $1 that you laid out to play the game. This is what happens if you lose. Let's find the expected value of our random variable. What would it be? Well, we make a table to help us compute it. All right, now, $349. If X takes on this value, that means we won the game. What's the probability of winning this game? When, ladies and gentlemen, we play this game once, what's the probability of winning this game? We have a, There's a thousand raffle tickets out there. How many of them represent the winning ticket of the 1,000? One. One. So your chance of winning this game, if you buy one ticket, is one over a thousand. That's the probability of winning, one over a thousand. If X takes on a value of minus one dollars, that means you lost the game. What's the probability of losing the game then, if you play it once? It would be one minus what? One thousand, one over a thousand, which is saying one thousand over one thousand minus one over a thousand. Or the probability of losing this game would be 999 over 1,000. That's the probability of losing the game. Or that's a 99.9% .9 chance that when you play this game once, you're going to lose. All right. Let's take X and multiply it by its probability. What's 349 times 1 over 1,000? I'm going to call that 349 over 1,000. Whoops, over 1,000. If I take negative one times 999 over a thousand, I get negative what? 999 over a thousand. Now the expected value, ladies and gentlemen, is found by adding this last column up here. So it's going to be found by taking 349 over a thousand dollars and adding negative 999 over a thousand dollars. And what does that give you? Well, negative 999 plus 349, that gives you negative 650 over $1,000. When you do the division, you get negative 0 0.65 of a dollar. And so, as I'm, your expected winnings would be that you are going to lose 65 cents when you play this game. Now, can you actually lose 65 cents when you play the game one time? The answer is no, you cannot. So what is this saying again? It's an average. It's saying if you were to play this game many, 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 many times and keep track of, you know, whether you won 349 or lost $1 or won 349 or lost $1, and then add all those results up and divide by the number of times you played the game, the average would be minus 65 cents per play. That would be the average. So that's what expected value is. Expected value may not actually be, you know, an outcome of playing the game once, could be, but normally it's not. It's an average of playing the game over the long haul many, many, many times. <laughs> so another way to maybe think about this is, again, is, um, you know, maybe if like 500 people played this game, the house, because this game does favor the house in general. Well, actually, ladies and gentlemen, can 500 people play this game? Well, there's a thousand raffle tickets. Do you agree? So if a thousand people play this game because there's 1,000 raffle tickets, the house on average is going to rake in what kind of money here? Well, they're going to rake in about $650, correct? That's what the house is going to rake in. They had to lay out a $350 uh, flat screen TV to somebody because somebody's going to win. There is a winning ticket out there. So how much profit did they make? On this raffle, they made a profit of $300. And that's why raffles, ladies and gentlemen, are a good way to maybe raise some money for maybe a worthy cause. Okay? So they do make a profit of $300 on this raffle game.
Make sense here? Okay. On average, that's the profit they're going to be making. Would many people play this game or they offer this game many, many times? All right. All righty. Now, here's another example. 1,000 tickets are sold at $1 each for four prizes, $100 prize, $50 prize, $25 prize, and $10 prize. What is the expected value if you buy two tickets? So if you buy two tickets, what would be your expected uh, net winnings, let's say? All right. Okay. Well, um, again, we always like to define a random variable that pertains to the situation. And the random variable is, in this case, going to be the net winnings uh, for playing this game here. So I will let X be equal to the net winnings. So what's the sample space of X here? Well, if you win the grand prize, you win $100, right? But, ladies and gentlemen, you had to lay $1 out to play the game. So your net winnings, if you win the grand prize, would be $99. That's for first prize, correct? Second prize, your net winning would be, what, $49. Third prize, your net winning would be $24. And that's third, third uh, prize. And the, uh, the fourth prize prize would be ten dollars uh minus one be nine dollar net winning or you could just lose the game not win anything you lose one dollar okay so let's see if we can compute the expected value for this uh, particular wait aren't we buying uh, two tickets yeah i know but i'm going to compute the expected value of uh playing this game once and then when i find that value i'm going to multiply it by what do you think by Two. Two then, exactly. So I'm only going to compute the expected value of winning this game once, if I play it once, okay? All right, and then we'll just multiply by two. As usual, I make my table. Let's say we win first prize. Net winnings would be $99. Second prize, net winnings. Third prize, net winnings. Fourth prize, net winnings. Or I could just lose the game. I'm out a dollar. What's the probability of winning first prize? There's a thousand raffle tickets out there. Do you agree? Uh, one of them is what? First prize. So what's the probability of winning first prize? Well, that's going to be one over what? One over a thousand, correct? What's the probability of winning the second prize? Well, there's only one ticket out there of the thousand raffle tickets that will give you the second prize. That's one over a thousand chances. Likewise. Likewise. So, ladies and gentlemen, how many losing tickets are there out there? There's one, two, three, four winning tickets. That means there must be. 1,000 minus 4 or 996 what? Losing tickets. Do you agree? Let's multiply these by each of their probabilities. So we'll have 99 over 1,000. This times this gives me 49 over 1,000. Notice I'm leaving them as fractions because I want to have a nice common denominator. It'll expedite my ability to add these together then. So the expected value is going to be the sum of all of these. It's going to be the sum of this last column. We're literally going to sum up this last column here. Okay. So that's going to be 99. So let's get on our calculator and dial this up. What's 99 plus 49 plus 24 plus 9 minus 996 all over 1,000? What's that going to be? Let's dial it up on the calculator. Speed this up.
Let me know if anybody gets it. All right. When you add all these up, 99 plus 49 plus 24 plus 9 minus 996, I get minus 815. This is going to be minus 815 over 1,000. And this is a dollar figure here. So our expected win net winnings when we play this game would be to lose... Eight hundred and fifteen thousandths of a dollar, or to lose about eighty two eighty two cents. Do you agree? That's your expected winning, expected net winnings of playing this game once. If we play twice, the expected net winnings would be two times that value. So. If we were to play this game many, many times, twice, on average, we would expect to lose about what? About $1.63. So obviously, again, you know, uh, this does ultimately favor the house, and there's a reason for that. I mean, you know, why even have a raffle? The purpose of a raffle is I'm going to raise money. Okay. It's not to, you know, it's not to have to take out a third mortgage to, 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 to pay everybody for giving away all your prizes. No, you're trying to, you're trying to make money. You're trying to raise money. So you better hope the expected value is a negative from a player's standpoint if you're offering a raffle because you want to earn money. You want to make money. That's the point. Okay. All right. Is this, is this expectation making sense how we're computing it here for these games? Notice it's been, it's been a common theme here for all of these here. All right, so I'm going to leave you with this thought here as we part with this uh, PowerPoint presentation, ladies and gentlemen. I have a question for you. Million dollar question. For a game to be fair, what would have to be the expected what would have to be the expected winnings or the expected value of a random variable for a fair game. For a fair game, what does it mean to be a fair game? A game that is fair favors no one. Doesn't favor anybody. Doesn't favor the house, and it doesn't favor the player. So the question is this, ladies and gentlemen, what, do you, what would you surmise or guess the expected value of a random variable defined for a game would have to be if it is to be a fair game? Anybody want to go out on a limb and take a guess? Think about it. If, if a game does not favor a player, but it does not favor the house either, what would be the expected winnings from a player's perspective? Or what would be the expected payouts from the house's perspective if it's a fair game a game that favors no one anybody what do you think what do you think the expected value would have to be equal to zero zero you are correct you win a million dollars ding 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 that's right Ladies and gentlemen, for a game to be a fair game, the expected value of the random variable defined on that game would have to be zero. Has to be. That's very important. Now, now knowing that, I'm going to take ourselves to our textbook and I want to show you a problem that they offer. So let's see if we can go to our textbook and uh, have some fun now. Hopefully Alex is running today. Uh, 
All right. So this is going to be section 10.6, where I'm going to be polling some of these problems. As always, please do take time to look down through. Oh, this is 10.8. Hold on. So we're not ready for that yet. We want 10.6. Here we go. As always, please do, you know, take some time to just look down through some of the examples because there are some examples in here that I did not have a chance to get through. They also elaborate a little bit more on the theory, okay, of the formulas that I've shown you, okay, today. So if you missed any of those, they're all, it's all in here. You just have to basically just unpack it, go in here and just kind of browse through here and check it out. We've all seen this picture before here, right? The exhilaration of gambling, all right? Okay, I want to show you a problem, ladies and gentlemen. This problem here is number 53. I want to make sure I do this one so I'll, so I don't run out of time because it's an important problem. And we'll backtrack and do some other ones if, if time permits. Hopefully that's the case. All right, 53. In a scratch-off game, if you scratch the two dice on the ticket and get doubles, you win $5. For the game to be fair, for the game to be fair, how much should you pay to play the game? So how much, ladies and gentlemen, should we have to lay out to play this game if it is to be a fair game? Now, what does it mean to scratch off these two dice on our ticket and to get doubles? Can anybody give me an example of doubles in a dice uh, in this dice scratch off game? What does it mean, doubles? Well, I'll show you what doubles means. Doubles means, ladies and gentlemen, that you would, what, scratch off a one and a one or a two and a two, three and a three, four and a four, five and a five, or a six and a six. That means you get doubles. And how many ways can you get doubles? What's the probability of getting doubles when you buy a ticket? One, two, three, four, five, six out of what? Six over, how many outcomes are there totally here? Six over 36. That'd be the probability of getting doubles. So I have another question for you. What's the odds of getting doubles? The odds, anybody? How do I convert this probability to the odds of getting doubles on this scratch off ticket game? How do I convert this probability six over 36 to odds? The odds of getting doubles would be six over 36 minus six. The odds of getting doubles would be 6 to 30 odds. Or if you reduce this, the odds would be 1 to 5 odds. Do you agree? 1 to 5 odds of scratching off these dice on this ticket and getting doubles. What would be the odds against getting doubles? Anybody? The odds against getting doubles would be... The odds against getting doubles. What's the reciprocal of one fifth? Five to one odds of not getting doubles. Okay. There we go. All right. So let's go back to our problem here. Uh, where were we? Oh, we were right here. Okay, number 53 here. All right. For the game to be fair, how much should the player have to pay out to play this game? Well, we're going to find out. And uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do here is we're going to... Um, we're going to define X for this game for problem 53 here, we're going to have to find X to be our net winnings. Net winnings. When we play this game, it's going to be our net winnings. What would be the sample space for this random variable here? Well, we could either, uh, what? If we win, we win what? $5, but we had to pay out what? so much to play the game, but which we don't know what it is. So let's, let's define another variable. Let P be equal to the price to pay. I'm sorry, the price to play. That's what I meant. This is the amount of money we would have to lay out to play the game, P dollars. 
So if I win, I win $5, but I had to lay out P dollars to play the game. So my net winnings would be $5 minus P dollars. This is my net winnings if I win the game, win the scratch off. If I lose the scratch off, that means I lose my P dollars. And remember, this is dollars here, okay? So that's dollars. All right. Does it make sense here? If I win, my net winnings are five minus P dollars. If I lose the game, I'm out P dollars to have played the game. Let's build our table and start leaning towards computing the expected value here. All right, so I got five minus P dollars if I what, win. What is the probability of winning this scratch-off game here, ladies and gentlemen? What is the probability of scratching off doubles? Oh, do you remember? Remember that PowerPoint slide I showed you? How many ways could you get doubles out of 36 ways? Was it, uh, was it six out of 36, I believe? So I believe the probability was what? Six over 36, which is one six. So what's the probability of losing P dollars? This is if I lose, if X takes on this value. Well, that's going to be six, six minus one six, which is what? Which is uh, five, six, do you agree? Now, what's this times this? Five minus P dollars times one six. Uh, I'm going to call it one six times five minus P dollars. This times this, I'm going to call it five six, uh, negative five six times P dollars. Now, we want this to be a fair game. And to be a fair game implies that my expected value has to be equal to zero for this to be a fair game. So we set the expected value equal to zero. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up my last column here, sum these values up, one six times five minus P minus five six times P. And this better be equal to zero because my expected value must be zero for a fair game. I have to solve this equation for P, the price that I would have to lay out to play this game. And that's what they're asking for. All right. Well, how are we going to do all that? Well, one six times five, I'm going to distribute this one six inside the parentheses here. A little bit of basic algebra here. One six times five over one is going to be five over six. Minus one six times P is one six P. This is minus 5, 6P. And this is equal to zero. So how do we solve this equation for P? Well, I'm going to add these like terms together. These are called like terms because they both have P's attached to them. So what's negative 1, 6 minus 5, 6? That gives you negative 6, 6 of these P's. And we got our 5, 6 out front here. Don't lose that. P equals zero. But ladies and gentlemen, Six over six reduces down to one. So this is really another name uh, for five, six minus P equals zero. Now, how do I solve for P? The quickest way is to get P all by itself on one side of your equation. And your answer, therefore, will be on the opposite side. To do that, I'm going to add P to both sides of my equation. The P's cancel here, and I'm left with five, six is equal to zero plus P is P. And there you go. So therefore, we would have to lay out five six of a dollar to play this game. Get on your calculator. What's five divided by six? Five divided by six means that we would have to lay out 83 cents to play this game. 83 cents per play, ladies and gentlemen, would render this game as being a fair game where it does not favor the house or it does not favor the player. Fair game. 83 cents per play.
That's your answer to problem number 53. I have a question for yeah. over on the left where X is, um, where P, it's negative P, and then it's P times the X. And you got, how did you get five, six? Uh, because this is the probability of losing the game. Do you agree? If this is the probability of winning, then the probability of losing would be one minus one sixth, which is really six six minus one sixth, correct? Oh, which is okay. Five, six. That's the probability of losing the game. Any other questions about that problem? Here? All right. Let's go back to our textbook and see if we can uh, invest the remainder of the time and having a little bit of fun. Okay, uh, let's see here. Let's go back to problem like number 24 here quickly. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to do problem 24A through D for classwork. 24A through D for our classwork, okay? The game is, or what we're doing, or the experiment is, we're rolling only one die. It's a fair die. We will assume that. Find the odds uh, for each of these uh, occurrences, A, B, C, and D. All right, go ahead. 24, A through D. Classwork one. All right, so we roll a die. It's a fair die. What are the odds of getting a three, of rolling a three? Well, how many favorable ways yield a three? How many favorable outcomes yield a three? There's only one way to get a three versus how many ways of not getting a three? Five ways of not rolling a three. The odds of rolling a three would be one to five. What would be the odds of rolling a six? Well, how many ways can you roll a six? Only one way. Out of how many ways can you not roll a six? 
five ways, one to five odds of rolling a six. What would be the odds of rolling uh, an odd number, I believe it was? I'm sorry, I think, what, what are the odds against rolling an odd number? Well, to not roll an odd number means that you roll an even number. So this is equivalent to saying, what's the odds of rolling an even number? How many ways can you roll an even number? One, two, three ways. You could roll a two, a four, or a six. So there's three ways to roll an even number versus how many ways of not rolling an even number. There's three ways of not rolling an even number. You roll a one, a three, or a five. So the odds, uh, okay, against rolling an odd number, meaning, meaning the odds of rolling an even number would be three to three odds or one to one odds. That's also going to be the odds against rolling an odd number or rolling an even number, okay, one to one odds. All right. Um, what would be the odds of not rolling a six? If the odds of rolling a six is one to five, what's the odds of not rolling a six? You just five over one? Yeah, five to one. Five to one. I'll just take a reciprocal of this. That's all there is to it. Okay. Exactly. All right. Good. All right. Let's move to problem number 28. Find the probability that you will win a Wii bowling tournament given these odds. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, these are odds, okay? All of these in A through D are odds. They want the probability in favor of winning then. So they want you to convert these odds into probabilities. I want you to do 20, 28 A and B for classwork number two. Convert these odds into probabilities of winning. Go ahead. Classwork number two. Converting odds to probabilities. All right. Now, how do we go from odds to probabilities? This is how. If this is the odds of something occurring or some event E occurring, let's say, or whatever event it is, A to B odds of occurring, then the probability of that event occurring would be A to A plus B. Odds to probabilities. Okay. Odds to probabilities. So if this is the odds of winning a Wii competition, 
Okay, the probability of winning that weak competition would be three over three plus four, or the probability would be three to seven, three over seven. That's a probability. These are, this is an odds. This is a probability. If the prob if the odds of winning a Wii uh, competition is one to seven odds, then the probability of winning that uh, a Wii competition would be one over one plus seven. So the probability of winning would be one over eight. One over eight. That's how you go from odds to probabilities. Odds to probabilities. Okay. All right. Did anybody, is anybody getting these correct? Anybody out there? Anybody? Any success out there? Yes. Yeah, I've got a All few right. correct. All right. Now, 29, let's go backwards. Number 29, do this for classwork number, I don't know, classwork three. If the odds against a horse winning a race are nine to five, find the probability that the horse will win the race. Wait a minute. That's a repeat, isn't it? Okay. Tell you what, let's just do this as a class. This is not a class work. So what's going to be the probability that this horse wins the race if the odds of winning the race is nine to five odds? Yeah, I got a question for you, ladies. Why can why can nine over five not be a probability? Why can it not be a probability? Nine over five is not a valid probability. Why? Because we said a long time ago, probabilities have to be fractions or decimals that are between what? Zero and one inclusive? Nine fifths is greater than one. That's not a valid probability. That's why it's not a probability. That's the odds of this horse winning the race. So what's the probability of the horse winning the race? Nine over what? Five plus nine. This is the probability of the horse winning the race. Nine fourteenths is the probability of the horse winning the race. Nine to five are odds. Okay. All right. So just make sure that uh, you're able to go, you know, from um, uh, odds to probability. Okay. All right, let's see what else we got here. This here. All right, so um, to go from odds to probability, if this is an odds, this is what the probability would be. How would we go backwards here? Uh, how do we go from uh, probability back to odds? Well, if this is a probability, then to go back to odds would be this right here. This is a probability. This would be odds. Probability to odds, odds to probability. Notice the difference here. Okay. So what's the probability of rolling doubles when you roll two dice? The probability of rolling doubles would be 6 over 36. Right? That's the probability of rolling doubles. Rolling a 1 and a 1, 2 or 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, or 6, 6. What would be the odds of rolling doubles then? It would be 6 over... 36 minus 6, or the odds would be 6 to 30. This is a probability. This is odds. Okay. All right. What would be the... Um, what would be the probability of not rolling doubles when you roll two dice? Well, it's going to be 1 minus this, or 36 over 36 minus 6 over 36, or 30 over what? 36. This is the probability of not rolling doubles when you roll two dice. So what would be the odds of not rolling doubles, ladies and gentlemen? Well, it's going to be 30 over 36 minus 30, or 30 over what? Over 6. This is the odds of not rolling doubles. 
when you roll two dice. Notice it's a reciprocal of the odds of rolling doubles when you roll two dice. This is the probability of rolling doubles. This is the probability of not rolling doubles. Okay. So hopefully we're starting to, you know, gain a better feel for the relationship between probabilities and odds here. All right. All right. Now it's two o'clock. Um, I want to do a problem uh, out of the textbook here, and then I'm going to maybe give you one last classwork if time permits. Number 58, this involves a, an insurance company problem here. Remember I said expectation is used in the insurance industry. This will hopefully give you a little taste of that. If a 60-year-old buys a $1,000 life insurance policy at a cost of $60 and has a probability of 0.972 of living to the age of 61, find the expectation of the policy until the buyer reaches 61. And so as we're going to see if this insurance company is going to stay in business or go broke here by selling these uh, life insurance policies to these 60-year-olds. By the way, it's nice to know I got up about a 97.2% chance of making it to my 61st birthday. Uh, now you know my age. Uh, so that's comforting to know that. Okay. All right. So we're going to define a random variable X, uh, problem 58, to represent the perspective of the insurance company. So this will be the, um, from the perspective of the insurance company, uh, that's what it's going to pertain to. Um, this is going to be the, uh, the net earnings of the insurance company. Okay, the net earnings. So this is from the perspective of not the person that buys the insurance policy, but from the insurance company's perspective now. All right. So I have a question. What then would be the sample space of my random variable? This is from the insurance company. Okay. Well, if the 60-year-old purchases a $1,000 was it was it one thousand dollar? Was it yeah one thousand dollar life insurance policy for one year? So ladies and gentlemen, one of two things that could occur here over the next year from sixty to sixty one years of age: either the sixty year old is going to survive, or the sixty year old is not going to survive. So if the sixty year old survives, then the insurance company's net earnings would be what sixty dollars. Do you agree? they rake in the $60 for the policy. They made $60 on a 60-year-old for that year. If the 60-year-old passes away, though it doesn't make it to 61, then the insurance company, we're assuming it's for a valid, uh, legitimate cause that would warrant the payout of the $1,000 life insurance policy. Then the insurance company would be out $1,000, but they do get to keep that $60 premium for the year. So the insurance company would be out what? Nine hundred and what forty dollars. Do you agree? So this occurs if the 60-year-old what survives. This occurs if the 60-year-old what passes on, does not survive. This compute the expected value of X. All right, so X can take on the value of $60 or it could take on the value of negative what? $940. What's the probability that a 60 year old will survive? Well, from mortality tables, it's 0.972. How do you think they got this probability? Well, they probably kept track of maybe millions and millions of 60 year olds between 60 and 61. And on average, ladies and gentlemen, of those millions of data values they collected over a large period of time, they discovered that there's about a 97.2% chance that a 60-year-old is going to make it to their 61st birthday. That's probably how they got that. This is this, this, this value comes from what's called a mortality table. And insurance industries work with a lot of mortality tables. Okay. So what's the probability that a 60-year-old is going to make it to their 61st birthday? This is going to be one minus this probability. 
In other words, this is the probability that a 60 year old is going to pass away in the next year. One minus 0 0.972. Thankfully, it's low, 0 0.028. So there's about a 2.8% chance I'm not going to make it. All right. The last column is going to be X times B of X. So let's multiply these together here. What's 60 times uh, 0 0.972? That's going to be 58.32 dollars. Multiplying this by the probability here. Negative 940 times 0 0.028 gives me negative. $26.32. To compute the expected value of the random variable X, we're now going to add together the last column of this table. This is a compact way of saying we're going to sum up the last column here. So that means we're going to take the $58.32, and then we're going to add to it a negative $26.32. You can get on your calculator and dial this up. And what do we get? What we get is we get what? Plus $32. So ladies and gentlemen, if this insurance company sells one policy to a 60-year-old, a $1,000 life insurance policy to a 60-year-old, does that mean that they're going to make $32 off that one 60-year-old? No. In fact, that's impossible because the only thing that could happen is one of these two results, correct? For the net earnings of the insurance company. Either they're going to make $60 off that 60-year-old or else they're going to lose $940, depending upon whether the 60-year-old survives or passes away. This is an average. This is saying that if they were to insure a million 60-year-olds for one year and they sold this $1,000 life insurance policy and they kept track of each of those cases, and if they added up all of those 1 million results and divided by 1 million, this would be the average, the expected average value that insurance company uh, okay, will realize when they sell an insurance policy to a 60 year old. So does this favor the insurance company to stay in business or does it favor the insurance company to go under? What do you think? Have it go under. What's that? They're going to go under? Yeah, go under. The insurance company is going to go under because of this is what you're saying, all right? No, 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 no. The insurance company lays out would go under if this was a negative one negative number of dollars but because this is a positive number of dollars this is saying on average the insurance company is going to make 32 dollars per every one 60 year old that they insure with this policy now that doesn't sound like a lot of money just for one insuring one of these 60 year olds do you agree well let me ask you this do big insurance companies just just have one insuree on their on their uh roster or do they maybe insure maybe more than one people out there what do you think like that lizard company. What is it? Geico? How many people do you think they insure nationwide? Just one? Billions and billions and billions of people. These up for millions of different reasons. Life insurance, homeowners insurance, car insurance, boat insurance, flood insurance, fire insurance. Okay. If they insure a million 60-year-olds, that they would expect to earn how much? Well, about $32 million. About 32 million bucks. That's just a million. There's more than a million people in this country that have, life, have insurance policies to, you know, out, uh, out there. So uh, you can see that, yeah, it, this is geared for the insurance company to make a hefty profit, okay? And they designed it that way. They designed it that way by looking at the mortality of this 60-year-old on average. What's their chance of surviving your 61st birthday? So they gear it, ladies and gentlemen, so that they will walk out on average with a profit all the time.
guaranteed. Okay. All right, it is now 2.10. I have one last problem for you to do. This will be your last classwork. Uh, okay, I will have you try. Uh, this is for section 10.6. If I can find it here. Okay, let's see here. All right, number 54. Uh, this will be one for the road, we'll call it, okay? This will be our last class work here today. We'll wrap it up with problem 54. I want you to try to work on this problem. And I want you to compute the expected value of this game. Go ahead, number 54. Class work number, just call it one for the road. All right, there you go. This expected value that we're trying to compute is not going to be the net winnings. Like on this, just let it be the winnings, okay? Just the winnings, not net winnings.
All right, he's digging his palm here. Now, I defined X to be the, the winnings for this particular game. If you roll a sum of 2 or a 12, there's only you win $20. And if you roll a sum on two dice of 7, you, roll a, you win $5. It costs $3 to play the game. So this would occur if you roll something else, some sort of other sum other than 2 or 12 or 7. That means you lose your $3. Make this table here. This is if you win $20. The probability of rolling a 2 or a 12 is only 2 over 36. There's only two ways to roll a 2 or a 12, the sum of 2 or a 12. If you roll a 1 and a 1 or a 6 and a 6, that's the probability that you'll win the grand prize $20. All right. Now, you'll win $5 if you roll a sum of 7. There's six ways to roll a sum of a 7. You could roll, um, what, what are all those ways of rolling a sum of seven? Well, uh, you could roll a six and a one, a five and a two, four, three, three, four, two, five, or one, six. Okay. So there are six out of 36 ways of rolling a sum of seven. This is the probability of winning $5. So there's eight ways out of 36 ways of winning. That means there must be 36 minus eight or 28 ways out of 36 uh, outcomes of losing. This is the probability of losing your three bucks. Multiply this by the probability. 20 times two over 36 is 40 over 36. Five times six over 36 is 30 over 36. Negative three times 28 over, over 36 is negative 84 over 36. We now add this last column together. And we get our expected value, which is negative fourteen thirty six dollars, which is about you're expected to lose about thirty nine cents per play on average. So if you're to play this game many, 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 many times, keep track of all the outcomes, divide the sum of all those outcomes by the total number of outcomes, you would average losing, okay, about thirty nine cents per play. So obviously the game does favor, you know, it favors the, the house. Okay. It's not a fair game. But did anybody get that? Anybody? Anybody get that? All yeah. right. I'll assume that somebody got it out there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'll stay on the line for a couple minutes. That is the end of section 10.6. We learned about odds and how they relate to probabilities, how to convert back and forth between the two, and also about this uh, concept known as expectation, the expected value of a random variable pertaining to like game games or uh, insurance policies, okay? So expectation is really used quite a bit out there in the real world um, to uh, determine what we pay for our medical insurance, our our auto insurance, you wouldn't believe all the analysis they pour into determining what you're going to pay for your auto analysis, your auto insurance. Uh, they got a lot of people hard at work determining what you're going to pay. And most of it's based on your age, unfortunately. All right. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to let you go. I'll be on the line for a couple minutes. If you have any questions, if not, have a good day. And in two days, we'll start you know, digging into section 10.7. We'll look at some addition rules of probability. And then in 10.8, we'll close out chapter 10 by looking at some multiplication rules. All right. Take care. Thank you.